Okay, good morning, everyone. So today's class is all about basics of Python programming, and as we have already done enough about Python that we have done with the installation part, we have done that how you can run your Python program from command prompt, right? What are the commands that you can use to check the version of your Python or pip, right? How you can come out of the command prompt. And the other way is that you can directly use your shell in the idle way, okay? So you choose your way. I believe that, that idle is the best option on which you can do your coding instead of command prompt, right? So first of all, I'm going to cover tokens in Python and those who have connected with me in the last class, they already know that I have explained this concept thoroughly. So what are the tokens? I told you that a program in any language, it is a sequence of instructions. It is a set of instructions, or you can say it is a collection of instructions. When you write some instructions, it means you are writing a program, you are writing a code, whatever you call it, right? Now you provide it a code, suppose of five lines, right? And you want that Python should run it or C++ compiler should run it. Now how this should happen? Python will actually take each statement of your code and it will break it into smaller, smaller sub parts, right? And each smaller sub part is known as token okay and why it is called lexical components because everything that you are dividing your program into is actually something like it, it is like keyword it may be a keyword it's like identifier or it can be an operator it can be a delimiter so everything to which your program will break is actually having some syntax it's not something like random stuff to which you are breaking it into. It's not like ABC, which has no meaning. If there is ABC, it means there are variables. If there is uh, something like print, it means that's a function. So everything that your program will get break into is actually having some meaning. If it has some meaning, it means that is lexical. Okay. And everything, the small part in, into which your program is getting break into is actually called as a token okay so there are various tokens that python supports and other languages also support right the first one are the keywords now keywords are the reserved words okay so if they are the reserved words it means i am not able to use it for my personal thing for example i'm giving you an example that kfc kfc is a franchise okay owned by some person and if someone else want to use that name KFC, that is not allowed. Okay, no one can use that name KFC or no one can use the name McDonald's on its own because that is reserved, right? That is patent. That is already purchased by some franchising. Yes, if you pay enough money and you want to become a part of that franchisee, you open your own franchisee of KFC in your location, then you can name it KFC right but if you are opening a local shop that provides chicken things in that case you can't name it kfc because that is already reserved someone has already purchased this name with a good amount of money okay similarly in python there are some words they have fixed meaning they are for some fixed purpose for example if is used for if conditional else is also used like this there is for loop there is by loop okay all these words they have their fixed names and they have their fixed purpose. You can't use it for your own personal use. Now, what is own personal use? Suppose that you want to name your variable. Generally, I name my variable as A, B, C. But if you try to name your variable as if or else or for, then it is not right because that word is already there for some fixed purpose. You can't use it for your personal use. Okay, then there are identifiers, right? Every person has its unique identification, right? Your, your unique identification is your maybe Aadhaar card number, right? Similarly, if I am declaring some variables that are known as the identifiers, A is one variable, B is one variable, they have unique names. Although I have given the names of my choice, there is one variable temp. P E M P temp. There is one variable name. N A M E. There is one variable roll number. R N O. 
so these are the things that i am naming but i am naming them differently i can't create two variables with the same name i can't create two variables both having the name a comma a not permitted every name of the variable should be unique only then i will be able to uniquely identify it for example in your class if two students have the role number 1 comma 1 how will i be able to uniquely identify them similarly in case of python no two variables should have the same name otherwise i will not be able to uniquely identify them so identifiers are those variables to which you assign unique names so that it will be easy to use them if i want to use a i will write a if i want to use b i will write b then there are operators operators are also in your code right i write a plus b so the tokens will be a comma plus comma b there are three tokens generated one will be a other one will be plus third one will be b out of these three tokens a and b are the identifiers and plus is the operator right so the main purpose of telling you this is that when your program is divided into tokens some tokens are keywords some tokens are identifiers some tokens are operators right and there's no need to tell you what are operators you know that operators are special symbols that are designed to perform specific task for example plus minus less than greater than double equals to not equals to and so on right now your program is also made up of delimiters delimiters are actually the things the symbols that actually divide your program that actually separate your program for example i write a comma b it means i am separating my a from b okay so delimiters like there is colon there is uh, this uh, single quote that you put around your string in the print then there is this semicolon that you use in case of c c++ etc then there are literals also now what are literals literals are something that are like constant for example i i write a equals to 2 a is my identifier it is my variable and i am assigning it a fixed value 2 now what is that 2 if i write a equals to 2 in my program it is a it is an instruction now how it will run it will be divided into tokens there are three tokens a comma equals to comma 2 now a is identifier equals to is of which category it is an operator and two the value that you assign it is a literal it can be anything you can assign int value you can assign string value you can assign float value anything that you assign to any variable that is fixed that is known as a literal okay so now i'm going to explain this four data types okay in case of c++ what do you people were doing you were writing int c int a char a float b okay and i told you that in python there is no need of declaring variable before using it in case of c++ it was must you you have to write int a if you want to use that variable you have to first declare it if you want to use a variable of the character type you have to first declare it that's must but in case of your python you can just create a variable a and then you can assign it two as an integer you can assign it navneet as a string you can assign it 1.3 as a float it means you can't declare variable first you just create it and then that variable is actually capable of taking value of any type if i am writing a equals to 2 it means that variable is taking the value of the type integer good if i am writing a equals to in single quotes navli it means that particular variable that same a is now capable of taking a value of the type string perfectly fine if i am writing a equals to 1.25 the same a is now storing the value of the type float if i write a equals to true capital t it means that a variable is storing the value of the type boolean 
okay so it means values exist there is two there is three there is four there is navin there is some other name there is python there is programming there is 1.25 there is true there is false all these are the data type but we don't have to declare a variable first with that data type okay now what data types it so it supports python it means what type of variables you can create okay or or you can say here let me talk here about this i i am saying literals i told you that literals can be number it can be string now i am telling you what are the different categories of literals okay so you can you can create a literal of the type integer so if i am writing a equals to 10 so it means 10 is a literal of the type integer so you are assigning integer value 10 to variable a okay if i am writing a equals to 20 it means again i am assigning a literal value 20 and what's the type of that literal it is again an integer literal right if i am writing minus 2 minus 2 is again an integer literal right so plus minus literals integer literals they exist okay then suppose i write a equals to 1 12.34 four right so it means the literal is of the type float if i am writing a equals to 1 plus 4 iota it means i am creating a variable and i am assigning it a value 1 plus 4 iota but the literal is of the type complex if i write a equals to true it means to a i am assigning a value i am assigning a literal which is of the type true if i write a equals to navlin a equals to hello world it means that particular literal is of the type string so that's why i was telling you that your literal can uh just wait while it is okay, so integers can be endless can 21 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 there are endless integers then there are negative integers also minus 1 minus 2 and then endless floating point numbers are also unlimited complex numbers are also unlimited but strings are also unlimited if i write hi is a string if i write by is a string if i write python is a string if i write my name if i write all your names these all are the strings only exception is boolean boolean is all the only is the only literal which has only two values true or false okay so boolean is only a literal value that has only two examples that is true and false otherwise all other literal types they are unlimited they are endless okay so if i just want to check what is the type of certain thing okay of a certain literal what i have to do in the shell i have to write the function type and then in single brackets and in the single quotes i have to write the literal if i write hello world right i am writing in single quotes hello world so the type function will tell me okay this hello world belongs to which class it belong it's a member of class string because it's a string literal if i write type 1 2 3 so i am going to check the type of 123 right 123 is actually of the type integer if i write 3 plus 4 iota it means i am checking the type of 3 plus 4j and it is of the type complex so if you have installed python you can check this on your interactive shell okay then i told you about the print function right and why we use print function print function is used to display some contents on the screen right and what is the syntax for print you write print and then in the parentheses the round brackets you give the arguments the arguments that you want to print okay so the argument of the print function can be value of any type you can give the arguments of the type integer you can give the arguments of the type string you can give the arguments of the type float anything okay here is an example if i write print and then here in the arguments i write in single quotes welcome to python so what is the type of this argument it is of the type string okay and when i run it when i enter it it will just print welcome to python so whatever you are writing in the brackets in the parentheses it will just print it for you 
directly. So I have mentioned that print welcome to Python for me and it has printed it. So here, what kind of uh, literal I am printing? I am printing a string, okay? Here, I am taking a variable, uh, an, an identifier. I am assigning it literal value 10, that is integer, okay? And then I am printing A. Now here, what it is printing? It is printing the value in A that is 10. Okay, so A here is of the type integer. So the value, the arguments that you pass to your print function, it can be anything. It can be string, it can be integers, it can be float, it can be Boolean, it can be complex numbers. Okay, so your print function will do what? Whatever you pass it, it will just print it on the screen. And it is same like your C out in C++ or you can say your printf in case of C. Just wait. Okay, so you people all already know that how to start the shell. What I have done here, I have searched for idle, right? You can write idle here and you will be able to search it and then this screen will be there in front of you. Okay, and now in this idle, you can try all the functions that I have shown you. Suppose I am assigning A, the value two, right? So what I'm trying to do here, I have created a, an identifier A, or you can say a variable A, and I am assigning it the value two. Now you want to print it. Okay, so how you can do it? You can print, you can write the print function, and what will be the argument that it will take? It will take the argument A. Okay, so by writing print A, what I mean, what I want it to do is, I want that it should print the value of A for me. Okay, now how it will print, I will press enter. So your output on shell is always in color blue. Whatever you, the code you will write, it will be in black color, it will be in purple color, it will be in orange color, right, for different types of uh, tokens. But the output that it will show you is always of, the color blue okay so what i did i have created a variable and assigned it value 2 and then i try to print it you can do it directly print now directly you can write 2 for me so argument is that i am giving it in teacher argument i want that it should print 2 for me directly without assigning it first to a and then printing a i can print it directly like this also okay so if i write it can you if i press enter can you see i got the output in blue color it means it has printed it here for me just wait okay so here i am assigning it integer what if i want that it should print one string for me so you know that string arguments are in double quotes so i'm writing print okay and then i'm writing that my name is i am giving it a string literal here okay so when I'm writing print, my name is Navleen and I press enter automatically, I got my message printed here. So what's the message? My name is Navleen. Okay, so it is printing here. What kind of argument I am making it to print? A string argument because it's in double quotes. I told you that your string arguments can be in double quotes or they can be in single quotes. Both are same. Okay, so you can use any one method. Either you put your message in double quotes or you put your message in single quotes. Okay. One more thing. Your print is capable of doing operations also. Suppose I want that print should print this. So what print will do? Print will first solve it. 2 plus 3, it means expression. This 2 plus 3 is an expression. It will be solved first by the print. And then whatever value generates, that is 5, for example, in this case, that will be printed. So the output will be 5. Okay. I can make print do even more complex things like 2 multiply by, sorry, 2 multiply by 3 plus 2 divide by 5 minus 2, anything. We will work on this also that how it is solving this expression, which operator will be executed first. That's a different thing that we will do later. But it is capable of solving the expressions, giving the output, and then printing the output. See, this is the output that I got. Okay, so directly you can give it any floating point number also. Print 1.2. It will print it for you. Nothing to worry about. 
you can give it a boolean value print true make sure that your boolean values true or false should have first value true t capital okay t capital or if it is false then first f capital can you see the color changed here for boolean particularly because it has two values true and false the color is orange but the output is always of the color blue right then i told you that this print statement is printing what integers strings solving integers and printing it solving expression and printing it printing float printing boolean okay now i can also check what kind of data i am printing if i write type two so type function is actually telling me what is the type data type of two okay so the data type of two is integer so it is telling it is class integer if i write what is the type of a string suppose string is hello okay so it will tell me that it is a string class if i write that what is the type of this float number 1.2 it will tell me it is a float class if i write what is the type of this boolean variable with a capital f false it will tell me that it is of the class bool or you can also check the type of true with a t capital it will tell me that it is of the class bool so the type function is actually telling you the type of the data that you pass in the parenthesis in the brackets or in the round bracket and print is actually printing it directly on the next line right so i i think that this is i have to start a file so here at file go and open a new file and i hope that you can see this new file a blank new file untitled because it has no name i have not given it any name now i will do all these things here okay so what i want i want to print two first the instance i press enter you will not get an output because this is not that interactive it is not talking to you it's like this shell is like it is talking to you you ask it a question print to it is giving you answer two you ask it a question print my name is navleen it is giving you answer in the next line so it's very interactive very fast but this file is not that fast okay it will give you time to write enough code so that you can write with your satisfaction then you save it and then when you want to run it you can run it in a single go okay so first i will print two then i want to print my name is lovely then i want to print a float variable 1.2 then i want to print a boolean variable true okay then i want to use type function what is the type of two what is the type of okay let's run only this one okay the four different types of variables it is printing so what do you have to do you have to save it file then you have to go to save as you can save it i am saving it on the just wait on the desktop and i am giving it name one you can give it extension because it is a python file the extension is .py but if even if you don't write anything by default it is of the type python file so by default extension will come automatically or you can write it manually like this 1.py python okay i am not writing it because i don't want to waste my time so save can you see here the name appears that it is 1.py file and you have stored it where on the c drive user i mean you have saved it on the desktop and it it, it is having the name 1.py okay so when to run it i have to go here on the run i don't have to just press enter like in the shell i have to press run instead i am running it oh my god you can see in in different four lines you are getting the output let me show you it like this okay so for print 2 i am getting the output 2 for print my name is navleen i am getting the output my name is navleen for print 1.2 i am getting the 1.2 for print true i am getting the true so whatever i have mentioned in the brackets whether it is integer or it is string or it is float or it is boolean anything it is just printing it on the screen and one more plus point of print is that every time you write a new print a new print statement a new print statement automatically 
the arguments the value that you want to print it automatically comes in a new line can you see here two is in one line my name is navleen is another line 1.2 is another line so this is the plus point of print that it will automatically insert a new line whereas in case of c out you remember c out is always printing all the messages in the same line even if you write 10 c out continuously so all the 10 messages will be in the same line and when how to break the line you have to write slash n or sometimes you use and l there but the plus point of print is automatically it will print everything written inside it in a new line this way okay so the next topic is assigning values to a variable and this is something that we are doing all the time we have a variable with us any identifier for example a and we assign it value for example if i am writing a equals to 2 so what value i am assigning to a i am assigning 2 to it if i am writing a equals to hello so what value i am assigning to a it's hello okay and you know to assign value you always use one operator what's that operator that is known as the this operator equals to operator it is known as the assignment operator okay so assigning values to a variable means that you are assigning value to a variable you are giving value to a variable and it is known as assignment statement when you assign a value to a variable it means which statement you are writing you are writing assignment statement suppose i have one assignment with me i assign it to you i have assignment 1.1 and i assign it to some student for example akash okay so it means i am assigning that assignment to akash now akash has that assignment similarly if i am writing a equals to 2 it means i am assigning value 2 to a it means a has now that value 2 in it okay and this whole process is known as assignment i am assigning you the assignment and what is the syntax the syntax is you have a variable with you for example a or b or c then you write equals to and then you write the expression now what what do you mean by expression here suppose i write a equals to 2 plus 3 it means i am assigning 5 value to a if i am writing a equals to 2 minus 3 it means i am assigning minus 1 to a so it's not compulsory that you always write a equals to 1 a equals to 2 or b equals to 5 or b equals to navleen or c is equals to 1.25 sometimes you assign them expressions also like a equals to 1 plus 2 so what will happen 1 plus 2 will be calculated 3 will be assigned to a okay so there is a variable with us then you will use the assignment operator equals to is known as the assignment operator and then there is an expression here okay so you have a variable then there is equals to and then there is an expression with you for example if i write a equals to 10 it means this is one assignment statement this is the variable this is the assignment operator and this is the expression or the variable i am assigning the literal i am assigning so if i check a the value in a is 10 if i write str equals to hello it means i am assigning value hello to variable str and when i check the value in str hello will be printed okay so suppose here if i write a that's my variable and if i assign it 2 so this is an assignment statement now a got value 2 if you want to print it one way is you write print a here and it will print it for you or you directly write a even then it will print this is only with shell that you write the variable name and it will give you the value in it okay and if you go inside the file this thing will not work that you write a and it will print give you value in that case you have to write print for sure so suppose i am assigning a my name that is navleen okay so this is again one assignment statement so a is getting the value navleen and how i am doing it i am doing it with the help of this assignment operator so navleen value is now assigned to a and if i want to check it i can write a and i will see the value navleen in it so this is assignment of recording type what is the type of two okay what is the type of mm, the okay value hello and what is the type of value 1.25 okay see if i run this i save it if i run this 
can you see here what output i got i i got the output let me drag it above for you people okay okay let me drag okay this is the output that i got for this input see something is missing print 2 is there 2 is printed my name is navleen is printed print 1.2 is printed true is also printed but this type thing is not working here in in file in the file as it was working in the shell it means this type is not interactive function if you want to print the type of two you have to write it like this see in the file only you have to print what is the type of two like this you have to print so in the file these functions type anything else that are otherwise working in shell very fast they will not work so anything you want to print you have to put it inside the print function now i am about to save it so what i did i have just put it inside the brackets of print as an argument now the type of two is int and it will print it because i have passed it to print function the type of hello is string it will print it let's run it and see can you see now it has printed it for us okay this is the difference between your file file is actually allowing you helping you to write code long code and you can save it and you can keep it with you but there are some drawbacks of the file also that in case of file it is not interactive it is dumb okay so if you want to just check if you want to check the working of some function directly you want to print something you definitely have to put inside the print otherwise that function will not work directly resume so suppose i have value in a i have value 2 in b i have value 3 with me what i want i want that it should be interchanged it should be swapped after swapping what will happen the value in a should be 3 this is what i want and the value in b should be 2 that will be my output okay currently a has value 2 in it b has value 3 in it what i want that after i apply swapping of variables what should happen that the value should get interchanged right and the value in a should be 3 now and value in b should be 2 see how i am doing it in a single statement i am doing it okay i will explain the logic to you see the output So multiple assignments means in a single line you are doing more than one assignment. Okay. So suppose here, how many assignments were happening previously? Only one assignment at a time. Only ten was assigned to A. Only hello was assigned to SCR at a time. Only one assignment was happening. One value was being assigned. Whereas in case of multiple assignments, what will happen? More than one. values can be assigned in a single line that is known as multiple assign how so suppose on the left side i will write the variables to which i want to assign the value variable 1 and then separate all the variables with the comma so variable 1 comma variable 2 comma variable 3 any variable equals to on the right side you assign them the values expression 1 expression 2 expression three. example here i have one variable p i have another variable q so i have written p comma q and after equals to i have written 10 comma 20 so what is happening 10 value will be assigned to p 20 value will be assigned to q in the same order if you write p comma q equals to 10 comma 20 what's happen 10 will be assigned to the first value will be assigned to the first variable the second value will be assigned to the second variable just to prove that whether they got the value or not you have to just print the names this is capital p okay there is some mistake so just write capital p and it will print it has 10 in it that's the proof that it got 10 just write q and it will print that it has 20 in it so the, this is known as multiple assignments right so i have that shell with me right this is the shell okay so suppose i am doing it here capital p comma capital q equals to 
eleven comma twelve. It means eleven value will be assigned to capital P. Twelve value will be assigned to capital Q. See now, let's prove. P got value eleven. That's the proof. Q got value twelve. That's the proof. I can assign more than two also. Suppose A comma or you can use a small letter A comma B comma C comma D, and I want to assign them value ten comma twelve comma fourteen comma sixteen. Okay. So what's the value in A? That's ten. What's the value in B? That's twelve. What's the value in C? That's fourteen. What's the value in D? That's sixteen. This is multiple assignment in a single line. I can assign the mixture value. Suppose a comma b comma c. To a I want assign high. To b I want to assign two. To c I want to assign three. See a got high, b got two, c got three. So it's not compulsion that only they get a single type of value. Only integers or only uh, strings or only floats. They can get a mixture of values also. So this is known as multiple assignments. Two variables in a single line. People, 